Hello and welcome to a special presentation of the Azure Stack Development Kit and why it matters. My name is Charles Joy. I'm a Principal Program Manager on the Azure Stack team. Some quick agenda. I'm going to go over a overview of the Azure Stack Development Kit, who, what, where, when, and why, architecture, what it is and what it isn't. I'll talk through some things around deployment, and then I'll talk through uh, what's new in Azure Stack with an eye to the future of that there'll be a lot of things new continually, so there'll be a website where you could track all that. So let's start out with an overview. Who, what, where, when, and why. So why should you care about the Azure Stack Development Kit? Well, you could hit the ground running quickly. You could understand the impacts on IT service delivery, at the same time preparing your IT teams and experience new capabilities in a dev kit environment. Now, essentially what this all means is that there are new operating models and Azure Stack Development Kit allows you to introduce those models in a small stamp and uh, so you can start uh, preparing your organization for those new operating models now. So who should be interested? Well, Azure Stack One Node Development Kit is targeted for the following. An Azure consistent cloud experience, demonstrating Azure Stack and services and applications on Azure Stack, kicking the tires, probably the most common uh, the reason, of uh, an Azure Stack production in a dev test environment, developing hybrid and or modern applications, and then also allowing the cloud administrator, that's probably a new role, um, experience on an Azure Stack system. So what is the Azure Stack Development Kit? Well, the idea behind the Dev Kit or OneNote or whatever you want to call it uh, is, you know, it's a limited deployment duration. It's measured in hours. It's minimal nodes. It's one node, no special, you know, network switches or anything like that, like the integrated system would have. It's a reduced component install, obviously less VMs, not highly available. It's easy to install. It's essentially PowerShell, but we even have a wrapper now that's a UI that uh, wraps that PowerShell up and helps you kick it off. It enables on-premises Azure modern application development, and you could, depending on your configuration, integrate it into a large environment, larger environment. So where can Azure Stack Dev Kit be deployed? Well, essentially, it's any system that meets the re minimum requirements for hardware requirements. Uh, so existing data center system or large workstation machines meeting the minimum requirements. Uh, development kit is assumed to have, um, you know, unfettered network access to the Internet. Uh, you know, that's for the Azure Active Directory connected scenario. But you can also deploy um, connected or disconnected with ADFS. Minimum requirements, really, they're there to ensure that you have the minimum storage, network, and memory. And uh, if you want to validate uh, your hardware before you know, attempting deployment, we have a deployment uh, pre-rec checker. Uh, essentially the same pre-rec checker that we have um, you know, baked into the deployment, but you could download this. You know, It's lightweight and run the script and see where you're at. And of course, all of this can be found um, in the documentation. So, what are some hardware considerations for the Azure Stack Development Kit? Ensure you have a minimum number of disks with consistent bus type and sizes. Ensure you have ample available disk space. And when you do deploy, based on your configuration, uh, a simple space, means no resiliency, is created when you have less than 8 data disks and under 2 terabytes total space uh, available. So if you have more than that, or you, you exceed those two things, and you have to exceed both of them, it goes into a mirrored um, state, which has resiliency, but obviously will cut down your storage space in half. So that's for storage. For RAM, or memory, ensure you have sufficient memory beyond the minimum to support workloads, because the minimum just gets you essentially the, the baseline, and you could do a couple VMs. Um, and really, we've modified our stamp in the latest release uh, as far as footprint is concerned. So the minimum 96 gig of RAM, while it will not adequately support the deployment of all the additional resource providers such as SQL, MySQL, and App Service, you can get one or two of them depending on um, you know what sizes you choose for the VMs. Essentially though, the more memory you have available, the more resources and services you can deploy. As far as networks are concerned, no IPv6, so it's only IPv4 uh, supported. And uh, a quick note, Azure Stack VPN connections to Azure are not supported through the NAT. And, uh, one node, our development kit is all behind a BGP NAT VM or the NAT. And because it's behind the NAT, 
this the VPN connections from resource group in Azure Stack to resource group in Azure are not supported because those connections via NAT are not supported. Azure Stack to Azure Stack are supported and documented. So when is the Azure Stack Development Kit available? Well, we just renamed it, so it would be available as of you know the GA timeframe, which is was July 2017. But if you back up a little bit, um, you know essentially it's now and beyond <laughs> is the answer to that question. But uh, TP1 has been available uh, as the proof of concept, its old name POC uh, deployment since January 2016. TP2 POC was released September 2016. TP3 was released March 2017, and GA, as I said, uh, Azure Stack Development Kit, uh, was released in July of 2017. In fact, POC is so important, we gave it a new name, Azure Stack Development Kit, as you found out, and it will be an offering period, even post GA of, you know, we have uh, ASDK and, of course, the integrated systems. So, a quick note, in development builds will be released based on a feature or fix or patch availability uh, as we move forward. So there'll be this release version, and then you'll have an option to download, uh, you know, an interim build, or we're going to call it in development build, uh, that would be a newer build than what the release build is, uh, so you could preview functionality until the next major kind of release build. So why is Azure Stack Dev Kit uh, important? Well, it allows you to have something at minimum scale, uh, but it's similar to the final production deployment. Uh, you have a repeatability of the dev kit experience in production. So the clicks and the API calls and everything that you make in Azure Stack Development Kit would be the same that you do. Obviously, the endpoints would be different, but you get the point. It's simple. There, there's ease of speed of deployment, redeployment, ease of management, operations, and the reuse of existing collateral. And that really, that goes for uh, multi-node as well. But you know, since one node is what you have available to you now, uh, and you always have available to you, you know, the management operations and the reuse of existing collateral is very important, and it, you know, it, it is one of the main reasons it's so simple. And then, of course, flexibility, low cost, and low overhead. The minimum requirements uh, for Azure Stack Development Kit can easily be procured and adopted. This is your only DIY option for Azure Stack. You can bring your own uh, one-node hardware that meets the minimum spec, hopefully over that so you could do more with it, but this is your opportunity for DIY with Azure Stack. Um, and it has been since the technical preview one came out in 2016, uh, January. So, uh, and of course there's multiple deployment options. You have minimum requirements. You could do large single host machines. You can deploy it on a large workstation. You can have many people connect to it. You can have different roles connect to it. So lots of different uh, uh, opportunities for use. Uh, furthermore, as far as why it's important, you can be introduced to hardware and software modernization in this uh, new operating model. So a lot of organizations familiar with traditional storage and networking solutions need to learn how software-defined networking and storage models will affect IT service delivery. You get a taste of that with Azure Stack Development Kit. Workload composition. Well, you may have something in Azure, so you're familiar with you know, composing workloads and ARM templates and things like that. But if you're not, you could start kicking the tires here. And the statement here is customers will need to review current workload architectural models and determine how faster standardized design and deployment cycles will affect your application and data platforms. So OneNote is a great uh, testing bed for that, or Azure Stack Development Kit. Workload management. Same thing, Azure Stack will enable customers to adopt a technology lifecycle model that moves at the speed of public cloud releases. So we'll continually be updating and patching, and OneNode's a, a great place to uh, test those things out. And then operations, Azure Stack will enable and introduce new operational processes, service models, and oversight that can help your teams make the most of your deployment from the start. So when to use what? So Azure, and you can use uh, you know policy, uh, ARM policy in Azure to restrict you know, the scope of an Azure subscription or resource group uh, is great for uh, you know Azure Stack application or solution development using Azure services, but trimmed down to what is available in Azure Stack. So we have a Azure policy that's available uh, that 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 helps you do this. 
Now, Azure Stack Development Kit, what we're talking about here, is really used for education on Azure Stack Administration, Application Solution Development Validation. It allows admins to do administrative stuff. It allows developers to do developer stuff on the same stamp and something that you stood up that could be sitting between them in a cubicle or something like that as, as far as you know, working together and uh, leveraging the same resource. And then, of course, so there's the Azure Stack OEM solution, or integrated system, which is used to validate an application or solution developed for Azure Stack at scale. And this is essentially taking what you've learned from Azure Stack Development Kit and applying it to something that's much larger, resilient, at scale, and things like that. So it's the same concepts that they're doing on the development kit, just in your production environment. So, what are some architectural differences? Well, obviously, besides the scale, <laughs> uh, which is the first one, one node is where all the infrastructure and tenant VMs coexist, right there in one place. Uh, we have some documentation on this that goes into a, a little more detail. So, resiliency. Uh, while mirrored storage configurations are supported, it is most likely configured as a simple space depending on the hardware. And we talked about that uh, a couple slides ago. Um, and even uh, with that, uh, it, you know, you're going to consume a lot more of that storage space. But if you have a huge machine, that's it work for you and it'll be more resilient. But again, it's one node. So uh, power failures to that node or or anything that can happen to that single node, it's as resilient as one node. And then network. Uh, one node's uh, a, uh, Azure Stack Development Kit has a BGP NAT virtual machine, which is essentially all traffic is routed through there. Uh, this does not exist in a multi-node because it's integrated properly into the network. And of course, there's no switch requirements. All, as said, all traffic goes through the combination of the host and the specific VMs. So what it is and what it isn't, and this is very important. So Azure Stack Development Kit is, or can be positioned as, a non-production deployment of Azure Stack a great place to start when exploring hybrid and or modern application development, a single host that you can put together and deploy on your own, and it's really your first impression of Azure Stack and possibly Azure services. So what, is, what isn't Azure Stack? Azure Stack Development Kit is not, as it's risky to position it in this way, it's not to be used as a production environment for Azure and Azure Stack workloads at all not supported in production, it should not be used as production environment. It's one node. It is not scalable beyond one node. It is not a highly available solution. And it should not uh, be used to deploy outside the defined configuration scripts. Essentially don't modify or hack the scripts because then it becomes unsupported. We don't want to spend time uh, figuring out what was hacked in order to get you back to a, a good state. So, some deployment considerations. Uh, so there's lots of tooling and everything around this, but I want to call out a couple things here. So there's a deployment checker for the Azure Stack Development Kit to pre-validate your OneNote environment. You can uh, go ahead and download the script from here. You can find it from my documentation. Essentially, it runs through a pre-validation step and, and tells you whether you're good to go or not and what things you can change to uh, fit in uh, the criteria. Then, uh, as far as Azure Stack, Get Azure Stack Logs is concerned, it's a great way to collect and diagnose what might be uh, wrong, whether it's with deployment or post-deployment or something like that. We have documentation. You can go to Get Azure Stack Logs, and you could uh, work through uh, importing the module and running the command, and we have multiple options. You could filter by role, like just the CRP, or you could uh, get everything and filter by a date range, or you could do both. We have uh, all that documented. As far as known issues are concerned, known issues from build to build will be found in the release notes, which you can find at Azure, uh, AKA MS Azure Stack release notes. A big note about Azure Stack tools. This is your hub of information and tooling around Azure Stack Development Kit. And of course, it's on GitHub. You can see we've, we're keeping it up to date. We have new stuff added all the time. You, if you're following the documentation, you have to go here for deployment, registration. The tools are here. They're mainline to your experience for Azure Stack Development Kit. These tools have been, uh, you know, as I've said, they're, they're here to help you complete deployment registration, management operations, and for scenarios like connection, adding a default image, creating plans, offers, and quotas, uh, and of course, uh, some newly stu new stuff, uh, environment testing through some of the Canary stuff, and then capability reporting with our cloud capability uh, module. 
So, Azure Stack Development Kit getting started. Where do you get started? Well, I recommend going to the documentation. There are a set of tutorials, there are a set of how-to guides, and it all could be found in our documentation. You can follow those step by step, uh, and you'll get that's the best place to get started. There's a bunch of stuff you can do, and you could just get started here, and then uh, you know start looking up other resources uh, or click on other resources once you get through uh, the documentation. So what's new in Azure Stack? Well, that question you could ask me, you know, every week, and I would have a different answer for you because we're continually improving it. So I want you to take note of this uh, AKA link is AKMS slash Azure Stack release notes, or I'm sorry, Azure Stack rel notes, which are the release notes. And you'll see from build to build, whether it's a release build or an in-dev build, especially for the Azure Stack Development Kit, what's new in Azure Stack, what you might want to try out, what you want to be aware of, what's uh, you know not fixed yet, or what was going to be fixed, and things like that. So what's next for the Azure Stack Development Kit? Well, Azure Stack Development Kit will have in-development builds available. Now, in-development builds let early adopters evaluate the most recent version of the Azure Stack Development Kit. There are incremental builds based on the most recent major release. While major versions will continue to be released every few months, the in-development builds will release uh, intermittently between major releases. In-development builds will provide the following benefits, bug fixes, new features, other improvements. That's why we have uh, release notes so you can keep track of all the things that have changed. So uh, this particular page that you see here is found on Azure Tech in-dev build. As soon as we release one, we'll expand on the guidance here and uh, give you a little bit more information on what uh, you can expect from in-development builds. So some references, and these are plastered all over uh, you know, Twitter and, and uh, the docs and things like that. But here are some quick references, Azure Stack Docs, Azure Stack REL Notes, Azure Stack Forum, where you should report any issues you might be having, Azure Stack User Voice, which where you should give us uh, your uh, feedback and information on, or you know feature requests. Of course, you could search hashtag Azure Stack on Twitter or hashtag Azure Stack Dev Kit on Twitter. Uh, that's my, you may find me there you'll find the rest of the team there. And then I do have a set of um, Azure Stack videos. I have a YouTube playlist, and uh, you can go find that. Uh, I've tweeted about it, uh, but it is available uh, as well for your viewing pleasure. And I'll probably put this video there too. <laughs> So that's all I have for you today. Thank you for watching. I hope this gave you insight on why Azure Stack Development Kit matters and what it could mean to you and your business. Thank you.